everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture on YouTube channel. My name is Otoy Jagali Masumeri, popularly known as the Nurse with the Difference and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we are going to be talking about sickle cell anemia. What is sickle cell anemia? What are the causes of sickle cell anemia? We are still going to be talking about sickle cell crisis, how to prevent sickle cell crisis, the types of sickle cell crisis and what aggravate sickle cell crisis by the end of this class you should be able to teach a friend or tell a friend about sickle cell anemia but before we go into details can you click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification button so you don't miss out let's go there All right, welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we're going to be talking about sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is when a patient has abnormal hemoglobin. Sickle cell anemia is what? When a patient has abnormal hemoglobin. And we all know that the abnormal hemoglobin is what? Hemoglobin X. Why is this hemoglobin abnormal? What happens in that whole story is that in a chain of amino in a chain of hemoglobin, there's what we call glutamic acid. It takes the sixth position. This glutamic acid is being displaced by valine. Valine comes, takes the position of the glutamic acid. That makes our hemoglobin what? Abnormal. And there's something peculiar or something special about this abnormal hemoglobin. They easily detect low oxygen. They are sensitive to low oxygen. So when they detect or they see those, um, they detect those low oxygen, what happens is that the red blood cells become sticky. The red blood cells become sticky. That is, they, drink, they touch each other and are sticky. The red blood cells become sticky, it becomes stiff, and it becomes sickle. Those are the three S that happens when they detect low oxygen in the body. Then in terms of the anemia portion of it, we all know that the red blood cells, after 120 days, they die off. But in a sickle cell anemic patient, these red blood cells are not up to 120 days. They die off after 20 days. Their lifespan is between 10 to 20 days. Unlike the normal healthy red blood cell, which lasts for 120 days. Definitely, the spleen is going to be working very, very hard. Then the bone marrow is going to be working very, very hard. This spleen keeps recycling those dead red, uh, red blood cells. This spleen just keeps working. That's why sometimes patients with sickle cell anemia, they are likely going to come down with a splenomegaly. That is the swelling or the inflammation of the spleen. The spleen is working, the bone, is, bone marrow is working, but there's no way they can keep up with the normal red blood cell in circulation as a normal healthy human being would. Then, in terms of the cause of sickle cell anemia, sickle cell anemia is an autosomal recessive disease. It cannot be caused by weather, neither can it be caused by a virus. You get it's actually caused when a child inherits the abnormal hemoglobin from both parents. So it's no one patient, it's no one parents or something. The child should inherit this abnormal hemoglobin from both parents. For example, this is the mother and this is the father. That's why there's a campaign that they tell you AS should not marry AS because when AS come in contact with AS, there's 25% chance that they are going to give birth to a child with SS. So for the child to be what? To be sickle cell anemic, it has to inherit the sickle cell gene, the abnormal hemoglobin from what? From both parents. Then in terms of children, when they are giving birth to a child with SS, when this child is giving birth to, the first five months of, child, of the child coming into this world, the child will show no sign of sickle cell anemia. But at the sixth month, the child starts showing different signs of sickle cell anemia. For example, swelling of the legs and hand, hands, which is known as dactylitis. The hands and the legs are swollen. 
you may want to find out okay why is this child not developing symptoms at best to that fifth or sixth month when the child start developing symptoms it is because of what we call the fetal hemoglobin this fetal hemoglobin is what the child depends on during that first six months of life till after six months when he starts taking the um the abnormal hemoglobin when you start representing what he or she actually took from the parents just take note of the fact that this fetal hemoglobin makes the child survive the first six months without any signs and symptoms of what of sickle cell in terms of sickle cell patients they don't really show the signs and symptoms every time they only come down with the signs and symptoms when they are experiencing sickle cell crisis some have sickle cell crisis randomly, some have it once in a blue moon, some have it almost every time. So it all depends. Then that takes us to our next jack, our next story, which is going to be on sickle cell crisis. What is sickle cell crisis? Now let's talk about sickle cell crisis. What happens in sickle cell crisis? What is sickle cell crisis? Sickle cell crisis refers to episodes of acute and severe sickle that sickle that sickle cell here refers to acute and severe sickling that blocks circulation and poses threats of extensive organ damage so whenever you hear sickle cell crisis there are episodes that are called in the sickle cell anemia patients there are episodes that occur where in a sickle cell anemia patient and they pose a threat to extensive organ damage. What we are going to be talking about next is what causes sickle cell crisis. I want you to take note of this acronym SICKLE to remember the cause of sickle cell crisis. Sickle simply is S, simply means significant blood loss, that is hemorrhage. When this patient's blood, there's excessive blood loss in this patient with sickle cell anemia, definitely there's going to be a reduced red blood cells and there's going to be a reduced hemoglobin circulation and that can result in sickle cell crisis. So if you have a patient or if you have a child that has sickle cell anemia, try as much as possible to ensure and to ensure that anything that results in bleeding is being removed then the other one i i stands for ines inesis infections can actually make this child develop sickle cell crisis then the other one is climbing or, or flying high altitude for the sea for example climbing the mountain climbing high altitude where there is reduced oxygen circulation can pose a threat to that patient having sickle cell anemia thereby resulting in what sickle cell crisis that is why patients with sickle cell anemia are advised not to climb mountains because there's low oxygen and the hemoglobin is very very sensitive to what low oxygen the other one is keeping continued stress keeping continued stress in terms of stress this stress could be emotional this stress could be physical so when you know a patient is having sickle cell anemia this patient you should be educated this patient should be educated on ways to avoid both emotional and physical stress then the other one is low fluid intake Patients with sickle cell anemia are encouraged to increase their fluid intake. If there is reduced fluid intake, they are dehydrated. It can pose them towards sickle cell crisis. So reduced fluid intake, dehydration can result in sickle cell crisis. Then the other one is elevated temperature. When the body temperature is very, very high, it could be as a result of fever or exercise, even cold can result in sickle cell crisis. Remember, for you to remember the causes of sickle cell crisis, take note of the word sickle. S for significant blood loss, I for inness, C for climbing or flying high altitude, K keeping continued stress, L low fluid intake, that's dehydration, then E elevated temperature then that takes us to the types of sickle cell crisis 
there are actually four types of sickle cell crisis. The first is vaso-occlusive crisis. As the name implied, vaso-occlusive crisis. It simply means the blood vessels are being what? Occluded. Something is obstructing the blood flow. So, vessel occlusive crisis occur when there is an obstruction in the flow of blood. Then the second one is aplastic crisis. Remember when we were talking about anemia, we talked about aplastic anemia. In aplastic crisis, the bone marrow is what is being affected. There's what we call the, um, the parvo virus, parvo virus 19. That actually affects the bone marrow thereby making it not to be able to produce enough red blood cells then the other one is hemolytic crisis hemolytic crisis as the name implies there's excessive breakdown of what there's excessive breakdown of red blood cells a patient who has sickle cell anemia and also has the glucosis Phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is likely going to experience what hemolytic crisis. You know, glucosis phosphate dehydrogenase actually help to does protect the red blood cells to ensure that they mature to 120 days. But when there's deficiency like that, definitely hemolytic crisis is going to take place. So hemolytic crisis occurs as a result of what excessive destruction of the red blood cells. Then the other one is splenic sequestration crisis. This crisis actually occur more in children. In splenic sequestration, there's pool of the red blood cells in the spleen. You know the spleen is where there's, um, um, there's, where there's recycling of the red blood cells. So the spleen is being overworked. We have pools of red blood cells in the spleen. And that's what um, happens in splenic sequestration. Just take note of the key points. Vessel occlusive crisis occurs as a result of what occlusion of the blood vessels. Aplastic crisis occurs as a result of problem to the bone marrow. Hemolytic crisis occurs as a result of destruction of red blood cells. The splenic sequestration crisis occur as a result of the spleen being overworked and is having pool of red blood cells in it. Then that takes us to the signs and symptoms of sickle cell crisis. The first is dactylitis. Dactylitis is very, very common with children. You see the hands, there's the upper limb, now the hands and the feet, they are swollen. The hands and the feet are swollen. As a nurse at this instant, what you are expected to do is to elevate the extremities. To elevate the extremities to ensure proper circulation of blood. So dactylitis is one of the symptoms that is very common with children that have a um, sickle cell crisis. Then the other is pain. You see this patient complaining of severe pain. If you have ever seen a sickle cell anemic patient having crisis, the next thing that should come to your mind is pain. The pain is so so severe. The other one is anemia. We all know anemia is there. Anemia is already trying to tell you that there is decreased hemoglobin in the blood. When you go for tests, the hemoglobin, the PCV is being checked. You find out that there is a decreased or a reduced hemoglobin and red blood cells. Then the other one is there is increased heart rate. This heart is trying its best to ensure that there is circulation of blood and oxygen around the body. The heart is being overworked. Definitely there is going to be increased heart rate because the heart is now working very, very fast. Then we have shortness of breath, then we have what? Infection. Shortness of breath, infection. Then that takes us to the prevention and management of sickle cell crisis. Now let's talk about the management of sickle cell crisis. I'll just give you some key facts or some key points you need to know about the management. The first is hydration. This patient should be properly hydrated. IV orally just ensure that this patient gets enough fluid so that those sticky red blood cells will be free and they will be able to move easily then the other is oxygen therapy the oxygen therapy is given so that enough oxygen we get to the tissues because the red blood cell is unable to carry out that function of getting oxygen and moving it around the body so oxygen therapy it's very important then the other one is pain control. Most times, when this patient comes to the ward, they come with complaints of severe pain. These patients are in pain. So as a nurse, 
one of the management you should take note of is pain control. You have to manage the pain given prescribed analgesics. Bed rest is ensured. We're ensuring bed rest because this patient, when this patient continues to move about, roam about, is going to need enough oxygen. We'll be consuming enough oxygen. But when this patient is resting, that oxygen will be, that's the oxygen demand will be reduced. So there will be no crisis, there will be reduced crisis. Then the other one is medication. Medication is very, very important. You have to give the prescribed medication to this patient. And there's also what we call them hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea helps to produce fetal hemoglobin. Remember in our class at the beginning, we talked about fetal hemoglobin. So what hydroxyurea does is to provide them fetal hemoglobin at that moment. Then the other one is prevention of sickle cell crisis. You as a mother, you as a patient, you know you have sickle cell anemia. So how to prevent sickle cell crisis? The first is to ensure that that child is properly immunized. Immunization helps to build the immunity of, of um, the patient, of the child, against future diseases or future infections that are likely to pop up. So immunization is very, very important. So vaccine should be given. And the other one is high altitude. A sickle cell anemic patient should avoid high altitude, should avoid climbing mountains because there's reduced oxygen around that area so they should avoid climbing the mount, uh, mountain and they should avoid high altitude then the other one is hydration proper hydration water should be their best friend they should stay hydrated always to avoid sticky of the red blood cells then the other is stress the stress could be emotional the stress could be physical but the crown of it all is those patients should avoid stress because stress is likely to bring about sickle cell crisis then the other is smoking they should avoid smoking smoking increases the workload of the heart it makes the heart work more it gives like it reduces the oxygen circulation in the blood so smoking should be avoided and also there should be decreased exercise because when you are exercising you need enough oxygen so there should be decreased exercise because during this overdue exercise the um, the abnormal hemoglobin remember they are sensitive to low oxygen so sickle cell crisis can take place and i know you don't want that to happen Thank you very much for staying to you. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much for sharing. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button if you've not done so. And stay tuned for our future videos. Thank you, thank you. And have a wonderful day ahead.